Hi, good evening, everyone. Uh, I would like to start by wishing you all a very happy new year. I am your host, Manpreet, and welcome to another episode of this season of IST Practicals by Intern Chala Trainings. IST Practicals is a series of free online masterclasses delivered by industry experts. These 45 minute sessions are all about teaching students important concepts, softwares, and tools. Every IST practical is an opportunity to experience practical learning. Today's webinar is about personal finance, and our presenter today is Tripta Singh. Tripta is an educator and entrepreneur based in Singapore. She has trained thousands of students around the world in real world skills with an emphasis on immersive learning. Being a long term investor and options trader, Tripta is particularly passionate about financial literacy and believes that it is a non negotiable skill that everyone should possess. I hope you will enjoy this webinar with her. We have a very special gift for you at the end, so stay tuned for that. And without further ado, let's welcome Tripta. Thank you. Thank you so much, Manpreet. And it's really a pleasure to be here today. So, welcome everyone. Thanks for taking the time out um, to join us. And also, I would like to congratulate you for making this time on a Friday afternoon um, to take what I hope will be a very first important step towards your financial journey. Um, and it's a very rewarding one. Um, so just a little about me. I started my career in consulting and then I've been in the training and education space for over a decade. And um, financial um, soft skills as well as financial literacy has been a big part of it. Um, I am especially passionate about empowering others to learn financial literacy skills. Um, and I feel like it's just not, not enough time is focused on it. So let's go ahead and let me share um, the presentation I have with you. And I hope you enjoy listening to it. All right. Okay, here we are. All right. So why financial literacy? Um, almost zero time is spent on financial literacy in the traditional education system. And actually, it is an essential life skill. I feel like we spend so much time on other things that we don't necessarily use the minute you graduate. Yet financial literacy is a part of all aspects of real world life. Um, so more time should be spent on it. It affects all areas of budgeting, saving, you know, when you get your first salary, knowing how to pay your taxes efficiently and correctly, even getting insurance, which is a really crucial part of, um, of life, you know, taking a loan. So for those of you who'd like to buy a car or, um, you know, maybe a mortgage at, at some point, you need to know how to assess it um, in the correct way. Now, the beauty of financial literacy is actually that the earlier you begin, the earlier you will you, you will have a head start in this journey and really be able to enjoy exponential returns um, in the future. And I believe, you know, I'm sure a lot of you are so excited at this prospect of independence. If you think back to when you, if, you, if you've, you know, moved out of your home or you've got your first, or you've got a first job, or even when you went to college, you've got a sense of independence. But let me tell you one thing, a true sense of independence only comes when you're financially independent, and that is the gateway to financial freedom. Okay. So I just want to, I, I, I see a lot of you active already in the, the chat, which is fabulous. So I just have a few questions. I want to get to know you guys. Um, how many of you budget on a regular basis? If you can just, just reply. Let me know, how many of you budget? No one budgets? Yeah, okay, quite a few people, great. Um, I think budgeting is really important. Do you save on a regular basis? Wow, lots of you, lots of you do. Okay, it's, it, it, so saving actually should be a part of your budget, you should put aside for those of you who do budget, if you don't already put aside, I would say 
um, you know, a, a good portion to, to saving consistently, and you'll see why. Got lots of yeses. Have any of you made any investments of any sort, whether it's stocks, whether it's property, um, gold, cryptocurrency? Fabulous. We have people who, okay, we have some students who don't yet, but I'll be sharing some ways as to how you can start. A, lot, a couple of people into stocks and SIP, fantastic. Great, lots of enthusiasm. Okay, so now let's move on to what we will be covering um, in today's workshop. All right, so today I'm gonna start by telling you how to calculate your personal net worth, all right? It's, it's a very important metric. There are actually three financial statements that you will learn how to prepare over time. Um, one is the income statement. The next one is personal cash flow statement, which is essentially like a budget because, but it includes money coming in as well as money going out. And the next one is your personal net worth statement. And um, that's what I will show you how to calculate your net worth statement. For beginners, a lot of you are students, I see. So actually your net worth, all three statements would look kind of similar and the net worth statement would be the most useful. We'll then move on to looking at why it's absolutely necessary to um, invest in some form or the other, okay? And we look at the impact that savings can have on your investments and your future returns. And uh, a part of that, well, the biggest part of that is actually to realize the power of compounding. And that is truly how you can take advantage of uh, savings and investing. Uh, because it's really small, consistent savings that lead to compounding returns. Okay. All right. Okay. Now we're going to do uh, a quick poll right now. There is a bit of a lag on YouTube. I think it's going to get sorted out shortly. Just patient. All right. Okay. So we, we're going to do a quick poll. And I'm just going to switch over and show you um, take the quizzes on uh, the Intern Shala platform. This is our training platform. And um, as a part of all Intern Shala programs, we have a, we have a very sophisticated uh, uh, platform. You'll have interactive quizzes, you'll have videos, you will have um, a live a, a Q and A forum where you can ask instructors any questions as well as project units. So it's a very dynamic and in, in interactive platform. So you have a question here on your screen. You should be able to see what is your net worth. And there are four options. If you could just chat, if you could just in the chat, type um, A, B, C, or D. What do you think your net worth is? Okay, I see some answers coming in. Okay, we have a few people saying D, a lot of people saying D, some B's, some A's. Okay, we have a few. For those of you who are commenting that the screen is not clear, but maybe you can try to rejoin because it could be a buffering issue on your end. Okay, fantastic. So the majority is D, let's go with that. And that's the correct answer. Now, your net worth is the total value of personal assets minus your liabilities. The reason it is not just A, A gives you the value of your financial assets, and B says financial as well as non-financial assets, which is, you know, the value of everything that you own. However, there's one part that's missed in that. You also have to account for anything that you uh, might have taken a loan on and you have to repay because technically... That's a, that, that's a liability, right? Something that you have to pay back. So you don't own it. So correct answer. That's great. Let's just go back to the um, presentation. Okay. So what is personal net worth? Personal net worth is the value of everything that you own minus everything that you owe. Okay? So we just saw. And why is it so important? 
because it gives you a picture of your overall financial health at a specific point in time. All right. Now, one thing that's important to understand is that your net worth metric, the figure that you um, calculate, it's dynamic. You know, it changes based on your financial habits, based on your financial decisions, um, because it's, 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 it captures all your financial efforts in one place. So it's a very, very important and useful metric. And that's why today I'm going to show you how, um, give you an example and show you how we can calculate it, because it's only if you track it um, that you will be able to see any progress that you're making towards actionable financial goals that you will set. Okay. Now, how you calculate personal net worth is you have the formula on the screen here, and it shows you that it's total assets minus total liabilities gives you your net worth figure. Okay, so let's have a look how um, let's let's have a look how to to go about this. We go for another poll here. Just share my screen. Okay, hang on a second. All right. Okay. So I hope you can all see question two on screen. Um, and our the question is, what is an asset? We'll define an asset. Um, and we have four options. I'm going to read the options out because it seems um, like some of you are having an issue seeing it. The first option A is anything physical that you own with a financial value. The option B is cash or property. Option C is anything you own with a monetary value. And option D is anything you own without an outstanding loan. So what is the correct answer, do you think? Okay, we have a whole mix. I think we have A, B, C. The majority uh, is saying, okay, we have a balance between C's and A. Okay, lots of C's coming in. So let's go with that. And that is the correct answer. Now, I saw a lot of A's in the beginning, so I just wanted to, to, to tell you that an asset does not have to be physical. An asset is anything that you could potentially sell. Um, an investment portfolio is not physical, yet it's, it's a, it can, can be a very large asset. All right. Asset is not only cash or property. It includes other things like jewelry, maybe expensive art, um, a car, a home, of course. Is, is, is a large asset too. And um, it's not necessarily anything. It's not, it's not, it doesn't have to, it can have a loan. If you have a house, it's still your asset. Your net worth will account for the liability part of it. Okay. All right. So now let's go ahead and find out how to calculate um, net worth. Okay. All right, so we have the formula back on screen. Total assets minus total liabilities is net worth. And we already defined a, uh, what an asset is. A personal asset is anything that you own that has a monetary value. Um, so if you own it and if you can sell it, it's an asset. All right, examples, cash, property, investments, jewelry, art, antique, anything that, that, has a, that could potentially be sold for cash. Now, a liability is anything that you owe and have to eventually pay back. So it could be a mortgage, an education loan, a credit card debt. So if you pay something on your credit card, it's actually a liability until you pay it off. Um, even money borrowed from a friend is a liability. And in order to find your net worth, you um, subtract your liabilities from your assets. So essentially, if theoretically you were to sell off everything that you owned, Whatever you would be left with would be um, your net worth. Okay. I have a very interesting. Uh, somebody asked a very interesting question, which I'd like. Um, it's it's uh, to do with an asset. They've asked, "Is an idea an asset?" Um, an idea is not 
it's a it's a large asset, but it it's not necessarily a monetary asset, but it has the power for you to, if you can monetize it, so turn that idea into a business, um, then of course the business will be an asset. Your cash flow will be an asset. Now, a positive net worth is when, of course, your assets exceed your liabilities. So that means that you own more than you owe. Um, and that is the ideal situation. We should always strive to keep our net worth positive where possible. There will, of course, be times in life when our net worth will be negative. Not necessarily a bad thing, as long as you're, you have a plan as to how to pay it back. Uh, sort of the biggest milestone when that would occur would be when you buy a home. If you take a loan, which the majority of us will uh, have to, um, your net worth will be negative um, until you're able to pay off the loan. Okay. So now we have, I've got a uh, an example net worth statement up here to show you how you can actually calculate it. And what you can do after this webinar is you can go and make your own statement. Okay. Now this is... Um, this statement, if you look, we have our assets on the left-hand side and we have the liabilities on the right-hand side. And you'll notice that the, the liabilities column, the numbers are written in negative, in, in brackets, sorry. And that is because in traditional accounting format, brackets denote negative numbers. So pay attention to that. If you didn't know that already, that's one thing you've picked up. All right, so in terms of assets, we have... This, this is a couple, Karan and Maria, and this is their joint net worth statement because they are calculating what they own together. Okay, so they have cash assets. That's money in their bank account, fixed deposits, as well as um, their savings account. They also have property. They own an apartment. They have some investments. Their provident fund um, contributions, as well as mutual funds and equity. They also have, um, they have a car, so that has a resale value, that's an asset, and they have jewelry, all right? So if we add up, their total assets come to about 76 lakhs on the date of calculation. Now, in terms of liabilities, we have a home loan, they have a car loan, they also have borrowed money from their parents, um, and then they have some amount of credit card debt. Okay, so their total liabilities, as you can see, add up to about 38 and a half lakhs. So their net worth today, well, on that date, is 37 and a half lakhs. So after this webinar, if you could go and jot down and, and, and don't worry if you don't have many assets, but just think about everything. Even the laptop is an asset, you know, um, anything with the resale value, jot down all your assets, jot down your liabilities. And I hope that, you um, a lot of you don't have um, many liabilities. So you're starting from a very, you know, you're starting from a great place. But if you do, write them down and find out what your net worth is today, record it, and then come back to it after some months or after a year and see how that figure has changed. Okay. And I'd like to now share how we can increase our personal net worth. All right. Why is it so important? Why, why is it important to even create a net worth statement? Well, you know how I'm sure a lot of you, we all aim to keep physically fit. Some of you might be going to the gym. Some of you, you know, might be very careful with your diet, your lifestyle. Um, similarly, you should take as much, as much interest and care with your financial health. All right. We should aim to keep our net worth positive and grow our net worth over time. And how you can do that is you can take a look at the net worth formula, then consider the various inputs and think about how they will affect net worth, okay? So how can we actually increase our net worth? Does anybody know, have any ideas how you can increase your net worth? We have a question, the last question. So we have, how can we increase our net worth? We have four options. Could you cut back on unnecessary expenses, pay off credit card debt, increase savings rate, or D, all of the above?
So a lot of you are saying investment is also, of course, an option. Uh, great. Uh, one of the main ways. What about from ABCD? Ah, okay. Fantastic. D, all of the above. All of the above. It's not just about, um, you know, increasing your savings rate. It's also about cutting back because you will thereby have more um, cash to invest or save. And of course, paying off debt is a large part of it. Okay. All right. So now in the formula, of course, we want to increase our net worth. So if you look at the components, there are, there are two things that you can do. We could actually increase our total assets or we could decrease our total liabilities. And if you're able to do both at the same time, that is actually the most effective strategy. All right. Now, how can you how can you increase your total assets? Well, in order to do that, you need to increase your cash flow. OK, and and you have to increase your positive net cash flow. Net cash flow just means the difference between the cash that is coming in and the cash that is going out. So if you have your income, your salary, your earning, that is um, uh, cash inflow. And then everything that you spend on your rent, your food, your expenses, that is your cash outflow. OK, so the difference between that is your net cash flow. It should remain positive at all times. And it should, um, to, in order to increase it, you need to earn more and spend less. All right. Now, in, in order to earn more, there are, you know, even if you have a full time job, um, you could try to generate multiple passive income streams. That is a very good way of earning more. Uh, if you're a student, you can even try to, um, you know, look for a part time job, work on the weekend. Nowadays, content creation, a lot of people are earning from online e-commerce or content creation on Instagram. All of them are good streams because they can generate passive income. OK, another way to increase it is also from budgeting and expense tracking. Why? Because you'll be able to see the areas where you can cut down on and, of course, increase your savings rate. And as you will see later on, by increasing and having savings, that's the only way you're going to have money available to invest. OK, at the same time, analyze your spending habits and your monthly um, uh, budget and see where you can cut down and how you can maximize any debt repayments. If you have any loans, pay them off. Pay off the loans with the highest interest first because that's the most expensive for you. You know, it's building up interest over time. Uh, minimize your credit card use. You know, now you're getting all sorts of promotions, advertisements. Um, how many of you have a credit card? Quite a few, a few of you said you did. Now, credit cards are great, but if they're not used wisely, uh, they're actually can be detrimental, especially when you're young and you have your first credit card because it's money, you know, out of sight, out of mind. You feel like, oh, I can keep spending. And then when the bill comes, you might have ended up overspending. So try to only spend what you can afford. That's why a debit card is probably much safer in the beginning to ensure discipline. OK, uh, same with EMIs. We go on any website, uh, many shops, we are offered this EMI option. It's attractive. Make use of it in a disciplined manner. Don't buy something that you can't afford just because you're, you know, um, taken in by the small EMI because it can it, it, it can lead to problems later on, you know, and tax optimization is another way. OK, so in terms of um, what we have done in this first part uh, on net worth, we've looked, we've seen that a positive net cash flow is essential for growing net worth. Um, some small steps that you can take as a start are you start with budgeting and expense tracking and focus on increasing your savings. As students, now is actually the time to be frugal. What do I mean by frugal? I don't mean, um, I don't mean um, miser. I mean, spend only what is necessary. There is no need to eat out or order food every day, right? You can cut back on that by cooking at home. There is no need to go for fancy entertainments or trips all the time. Save up. Do it sometimes. Of course, you must enjoy yourself as well. But maximize the time that you can save and earn. Um, get your foundation solid. Then you can move on to investing um, and maximizing any loan repayments, etc. if you have any. If you have an education loan, your first priority 
should be to look for a, a job, or look for a way to earn some income, and you can pay that back as quickly as possible. Now, the secret to wealth building, I told you, you can increase your assets or you can decrease your liabilities. Um, it's actually best to focus on earning more. Uh, cutting back is one thing, but there is no ceiling to how much you can potentially earn. You have to recognize this. Cutting down on expenses will only bring you so far. There is a flaw. You know, there's so much we have to eat. There's our basic living expenses will, will always remain. You can't, you, you can't make them zero, but what you do have is unlimited earning potential. Okay. So now that brings us to why should we invest? Well, investing is a wonderful part and the most exciting part of your financial journey. And it comes after having built up an emergency fund and having built up your um, savings. Okay. Then you can use these savings to invest in a disciplined manner. Um, why is that important? Because I don't know if you realize, but cash in the bank, cash just sitting in your bank account is essentially dead money. You know, if you're earning some interest on it, great, but it still might not be enough. And I'll show you why. So it's very important that you should make your money work for you by using it to generate returns. And that's where investing comes in. It's an effective tool. Um, it's an effective tool to do two things. You can do income generation or asset, appreci asset appreciation. Income generation is when, let's say you buy a property, small flat, and you're able to put that on rent. So every month you're getting rent coming. That's a form of income generation. Or you buy stocks on the stock market and you get a dividend you buy a dividend stock, um, that dividend is your income, okay? Asset appreciation is when you've bought, if you've bought a flat and you sell it maybe after 10 years, 15 years, the price that your that flat increases by is your appreciation, okay? So that that is, so investors follow two strategies. And when you invest, it's important to balance risk reward. Everybody is going to have their own risk reward. Um, everybody has their own financial goals, their own responsibilities. Nobody's financial journey is going to be identical. So you have to look at where you are, your responsibilities, um, and uh, then accordingly define your risk appetite. Some people are more aggressive. Some people are very conservative. You should not lose sleep at night. Only do what you can tolerate. So once you've done that, then you can structure a diversified portfolio. Okay, now I have, there are four reasons why investment is necessary. The first one is in order to meet your financial goals. We all have financial goals, um, or you will have soon, I hope. And in order to meet them in the time frame that's stipulated, you will need to invest, okay? Uh, another major reason why people invest is to fund their retirement because, because during your um, working life when you are earning a consistent income, that's fine. What happens when you retire? Your living expenses don't disappear. Um, in fact, even things like healthcare costs can rise, right? And you also want to enjoy your retirement. So it's very important that you have planned towards it while you're um, working. The third reason and, 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 and a very, very crucial reason that not many recognize is inflation. Okay. Inflation. And as you can see, it's in red. Why is it in red? Um, inflation is all over the news every day, you know, especially this week. If you're following um, international news, if you're looking at what's happening in Europe, in the US, even in India, inflation is headline. Um, and, and I'll show you why. And the last is compounding. Okay. Com if you if you do not invest, you are really missing out on true magic when it comes to um, exponential returns. So we'll focus on points three and four, inflation and compounding now. What is inflation? How many of you can write down what is inflation in one sentence? What is inflation? What do you think it is? Or have you, or you don't know? OK, 
Okay. Inflation is actually um, the overall increase in prices of goods and services over time. Okay. So basically what it is, it's an increase in cost of living. All right. So if you think back to five years ago or 10 years ago, um, what is the price of something that you are buying? Normal, an everyday item or, or how much were you paying for even transport or petrol or anything? And you might realize that today it's increased quite a bit. That is because of inflation. And essentially, inflation means that the money that you have today, if you don't do anything with it and you just keep it in the bank, it will be worth less in the future because inflation is eroding the value of your cash. If if um, the same amount of money, because things are more expensive in the future, you will be able to buy less with it. All right. And in 2020, the CPI index in India was 6.2%. And CPI means consumer price index. So it gives you the average prices of goods and services. Um, it's a basket of common goods and services. So that meant what 6.2% what means that the average price of, let's say, food, clothes, utilities, um, maybe even average rent increased by 6.2% from the previous year. Okay. So now let us consider, even if some of you have a savings account, and let's say you're earning 2% on the savings account. Well, your money from last year is actually worth less today. How much less? About 4.2% less simply because of inflation. If inflation is 6.2% and you're earning only 2%, your cash value essentially has been eroded. All right. So that, that's, that's something to, to uh, understand. And that's, that's why investment is so important because investment can help you at least retain the value of your money if you earn at par with inflation. Or if you're able to beat inflation, which which is which is um, it's not difficult, you can increase the value of your money. Okay. Now, why should we start now? Why should we not delay? Honestly, because of the magic of compounding returns. All right. There is no time like the present to start saving and investing, and it's these small, consistent steps that will lead to um, big returns. Um, and, you know, I, I, I hope that from the example that I'm going to share, you're, you're inspired. You don't have to have a large sum, even 500 rupees a month, whatever you can afford to set aside, set it aside. The more you have, great, but um, there's no such thing as too little to begin with. Um, now, do you remember simple interest and compound interest from, from school? Let's have a look at um, two examples to show you why compounding returns are so um, important. Okay. So let's say today you invested 10,000 rupees. Okay. And you were on that 10,000 rupees, you earned um, interest at a rate of 5% per annum. Per annum just means per year. So how much would you have after three years, let's let let let's have a look. Now, you have a starting balance of ten thousand rupees, right? How much interest would you earn? Well, five percent of ten thousand, so you would earn five percent interest. Okay, and then at the end of year one, you're obviously left with ten thousand five hundred rupees. Now, when it comes to simple interest your interest amount doesn't change. It is calculated as per the initial investment and it stays the same for the entire duration of your investment. So in year two, you also earn interest of another 5,000 rupees and you're left, of course, with 11,000. Okay. Then in year three, you start with 11, you earn 500 and after three years, you have 11,500. So very, very, very simple. Okay. So how much would you have earned after 20 years? Well, to do that, because your interest does not change, um, you have your total interest is 500 rupees multiplied by 20 years and therefore 10,000 rupees. All right. That's the total interest you earn. So how much would you end up with? Well, it would be the principal that you invested. So the 10,000 rupees invested for, 
plus the interest that you earned of 10,000 rupees, which would be 20,000 rupees. Okay. Now we'll move on to uh, compound interest. Okay, so compound interest is different from simple interest in the fact that it, in compound interest, the interest amount that you earn changes over time because you're earning interest on interest. So every year it will change. So let's see if you start with the same amount of 10,000 rupees and you invest it at a compound interest of 5%. How much would you have? So your starting balance is again 10,000 rupees. Okay. Then you earn interest of 500 rupees. You end up with 10,005. So at the end of year one, simple interest and compound interest generates the same return. Year two, now this is where it differs because now you start the year with 10,500 rupees but you earn 5% on the new balance, all right? So you earn 525 rupees, slightly more. And that's how it carries on year three as well. Now, at the end of year three, you might be thinking, well, there's not that much difference between simple and compound interest. What, what, what is the big um, fuss about? Well, the power of compound interest actually shows with time. It shines with time. And this is the compound interest formula. Um, might we bring back memories of board exams? <laughs> no, I'm just joking. You can, you can calculate it manually. It's very simple. Plug it in the formula or go online to a, a compound interest calculator. But basically, at the end of 20 years, um, if we put, up, put our figures, plug them into, a form, into the formula, you will find out that you would have earned 26,500 um, and 33 rupees. Okay. So if you recall, the amount you earned on the same initial investment was 20,000. So the compound through compound interest in this very simple example at a, at a, at a uh, moderate interest rate gave you a 33% higher return. Okay. So as you, so time is really um, brings out the true magic of compound interest and it's of the essence. Why? Now I want to show you how savings can help in this. Okay, so you have Tanya. Meet Tanya. Tanya is one of our characters, actually, um, in our program. It's, our programs are, you know, full of real-world, relatable examples. So she's just got her first job. Um, and she's, she's an avid, you know, she's very disciplined and diligent. She wants to start investing. So she begins by putting aside 5,000 rupees and she earns 5% interest per annum. Okay, her friend Nigel, um, he starts investing, his, his investing journey when he's 30 years old. You know, he, he spends his 20s, he works, he parties hard, everything. He doesn't really think about investing. He thinks, let's, let's think about it when the time is, well, I, have a, I have my whole life to think about it. So he starts at 30 years old and he also invests 5,000 rupees a month and same interest rate. Okay, so... Now, when they retire, let, let's say retirement, they will both retire at 65 years old. How much will they both end up with? Okay. So let's first consider Tanya. How much would she have when she retires? Well, in order to do that, we have to find out how many years of savings, how many years would she have saved for 45 years, right? How many deposits would she have made over those years? Well, she deposits every month, which is very, very important. Okay, the frequency of investing is important when it comes to compound interest. So every month, so we have 12 times 45, 540 deposits. And her total contribution um, over 45 years is 27 lakhs. Okay. Now, the total interest that she earns in those 45 years is uh, 74 lakhs, 74,000. Okay. And therefore, the total value of her future savings is the interest plus the initial capital. She would end up with more than one crore rupees. All right. So that, that's quite that's a wonderful sum. And how did I come to this figure? Well, you can actually um, use a compound interest calculator online. There are plenty of free calculators. 
use one with monthly contributions because if you are going to contribute consistently you see your earning interest uh, your interest will increase every every month because you're earning interest on um the, the fresh balance okay so we will share the link after this uh, webinar we will share the link at the end uh, to this particular calculator so you can play around with it now in this calculator let me show you what i've filled in the beginning account balance is zero why i've put zero there if you have a lump sum saved up and you want to start with that you can fill in that number but if you're just starting out and you're going to you know deposit um on a monthly basis one month one amount you just just put um you just put the monthly addition okay now your annual interest rate is 5% you have to choose your compounding interval so i've chosen monthly but it's important like i said before the more if your if your interval is a weekly you will end up with more if your interval is annually you will end up with less so compounding works over time um the more you the frequency of compounding will increase your returns then you put the number of years then of course you put your monthly how much you're going to contribute the last two are very important because as you start to earn more and you get a, you know promotions you uh, your salary increases you can choose to increase your yearly contributions by a percentage that will of course affect your returns and so will inflation for simplicity's sake i've put zero for both um um just so you can see a basic pattern but play around and see what numbers you get and how how high inflation would affect your returns and how um you know just increasing your salary your monthly contributions by 5% what difference would that make over 45 years okay so in the compound interest calculator you see that uh, this calculator this is how it gives you the results i like it it shows you your future value immediately um if you've put inflation percentage there it will show you both side by side and it also shows you a chart and from this chart look at the curve look at the look at we call this exponential returns um your initial investment is not so steep but what is steep is the amount of interest that you're earning and that's all because time okay tanya remember tanya she started a uh, uh, saving and investing just 10 years before nigel so she nigel invested for thir for 30 years uh, sorry 35 years and she invested for 45 years but 10 years now we're going to see what impact that would make so nigel's years of savings were um 35 okay his total deposits for 20 total contributions 21 lakhs so he, over time he only invested 6 lakhs less than tanya keep that in mind but the total interest he earned was 36 lakhs therefore his total value after 35 years when he retires he would have 57 lakhs now that's quite a difference you really can see that time is of the essence those 10 years of just 5000 rupees a month made a big difference tanya ended up with 1 crore um nigel ended up with 57 lakhs so that is 78% more that she will have okay and that's just with an annual interest rate of 5% can you imagine how that would change if over time she started investing more of her savings every month or she was able to invest in instruments that were giving her higher return on that note i i just want to tell you that if you're in it with a long term horizon which which all of us you know which that's the attitude you should take um the average stock market return just of the index not of individual funds i mean individual stocks index index returns the average return is 15% um per year okay there will be some years where it'll be more some years where it'll be less some years where it will be negative but over time if you're in it for longer the average returns are 15% okay now one more thing and um i want you to do this while you're on the chat you can you can try it out really quickly and that's the rule of 72 that's just one more thing to inspire you if you're not motivated enough <laughs> okay this is a quick way to find out how long it would take you to double your money all right what you do is you take the number 72 and you divide it by your annual expected return and that will give you the number of years that it will take to double your investment okay so let's say let's say 
expected return is 10%. You constructed a diversified portfolio. What do I mean by diversified? I mean that I've got some stocks, maybe a little property. I have some gold. I have some bonds, mutual funds, because I want to balance my risk reward. I can't put everything in the stock market. You know, maybe I pick up a little cryptocurrency because I believe in the future of, um, of uh, technology and the blockchain. But of course, I can't put everything in that because it's so volatile. So we construct a diversified portfolio and my expected return is 10% per annum per year. So how long would it take me to double? Well, 72 divided by 10 is 7.2 years. So did you really think, imagine if you put in, you know, even 20,000 rupees today, or if you can put in one lakh today at an average return of 10%, it would take you 7.2 years to double it. Okay. All right. So the key takeaways from compound, um, a, Compound interest in savings. Did you, did you know that Einstein actually called compound interest the eighth wonder of the world? That tells you the true power. Okay, now how can we maximize on it? Well, the higher the frequency. So the more consistently you um, invest and the longer you invest for lead to higher returns because you give it more time to work its magic, which is compounding. Now, it can, of course, be your best friend and should be your best friend. Make it your best friend, but provided that you are consistent and disciplined. All right. At the same time, you have to recognize that it has the power to become your worst enemy. Why do I say that? Because if you take a loan, if you borrow money, if you, you know, if you uh, even if you take a loan and you're like, ah, I'm going to use that money to invest, something goes wrong and you're not able to pay it back. That will work against you. It's, it's a reverse. Or you have a credit card bill and you don't pay it back. You forget about it. You know, credit card interest is one of, is highest. It's, it's 21 or 22 percent. It's extremely high. So be very careful because then it's working against you and it's actually um, eating into your savings and, and, and your, your investment is dec depreciating, decreasing. OK, so be very wary. Use it in a disciplined manner. Those this is a very uh, my one of my favorite quotes. He who understands it earns it, but he who doesn't pays it. That's referring to compound interest. So strive, try to be the one who understands it and earns it. Okay. So that's all I have to say about compound interest and net worth. Um, I hope that you've recognized that we want to always strive to maintain a positive net worth and start saving early taking consistent steps. First, start with a budget, start with expense tracking. And then um, slowly, slowly, you can, you can put away your savings, consistently save a small amount every month, increase that amount as you can, and then you can begin your investing journey. Okay, over to Marit now. Thank you, Trita. The whole session went really amazing, and I'm sure that we all got to learn a lot of new things about uh, managing our personal finance and investing. Uh, now we can open the floor for some questions. Uh, sure. But before we take the audience questions, I have a question for you, Tripta. Go ahead. So uh, kind of listening to all these uh, interesting terms like uh, inflation, cryptocurrency, etc. Uh, I am I'm, I'm a little scared and also a little excited. So uh, However, this session has been very knowledgeable for me. I would love to learn more. And so what, what is the right path for somebody who would want to learn more about personal finance? Could you please tell us that? Yeah, I'd love to. I, I think that's a, probably the easiest question I'll get tonight. <laughs> no. Okay. So um, we have a course. We have a course called Personal Finance 101 on the Internshala platform. And... Um, it's, it's, it's a course for beginners and you will learn everything on the journey. You will learn everything from goal setting, from how to do expense tracking, how to make a budget, you know, what are the steps uh, you should take to increase your savings rate. You will learn about interest rates. You will learn about loans, insurance, you know, the works. Then, of course, investing. Um, and then how to compare. You're buying a car, buying a house. How do I compare the loans? What do I have to watch out for? All of that is in um, the personal finance 101 course. 
definitely and for everyone who is joining this session internshala trainings has a very special offer for you uh you can go on visit the link in the description and use this code practical stem to avail an additional 10% discount on the personal finance training as mentioned by tripta now we'll be taking all your questions so you can just type in your questions in the chat and tripta will be answering them for you yeah so first question that i see when to start investing if you didn't get the hint already today <laughs> no. uh, we start with savings so you start with calculating a net worth and and create a budget and that's also part of you know your your beginning i'm glad i'm glad a lot of you like liked it um how to invest in a compound investment see there's no such thing as a compound investment what you're doing is you're investing in order to enjoy compounding returns and you can get that through um you know the 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 okay the very simple step that i can tell you when you don't know much is put those savings when you're starting to save open up a savings account that has a higher return than a um, a current account you know that could be the first step put it in there um let it generate while you study and learn one way is join our course or there's so much material online read up about in what is in a diversified portfolio and you know you start maybe with a mutual fund you start with um with something like that mutual funds is a great start why do why is it a great start um because uh you're managing your risk in the sense that somebody some experts are you know involved in it so you're not it's not going to be volatile it's balanced it's a balanced basket it's not a single stock if something happens to one company however good it is you might get a bit of a shock as an investor so you're balancing you're spreading your risk across different um different uh, stocks and different assets okay uh, a few questions about how to invest in cryptocurrency um now i have to tell you i actually am a cryptocurrency investor at this point in time i um i'm very careful you have to be you very wary with it it's probably going to be a long term investment but i because of the macro environment right now it's very volatile um so i would suggest you read up about it first and ensure that you invest a very small amount to begin with because you can expect a lot of fluctuations um all right ah how can a student generate income while still in school now of course it depends on what um on you know what your skills are and how interested you are but you know i would like you to think out of the box for this there are so many ways we call them side hustles you might be able to get a part time job that's conventional you know you uh, apply for a job in a store or apply for a job in a call center whatever it is a paid internship even but you can also be a bit more creative and look for passive income streams that's the beauty of technology today like i said e-commerce instagram there's so many web methods of doing it find out what your skills and passions are and look for that all right i think um i think a lot of duplicate questions are are coming yeah i think let's just take one yeah. more question yeah, we'll take we'll take we'll take it. one more question um and then and then you go okay very very i'll take this question how to predict inflation rates it's it's very difficult to do of course we don't know what's going to happen in the future and you go through cycles inflation goes up when oil prices go up you know um so i think the one way to do it would be looking at historical figures so go have a look look up the cpi index um for india where or wherever you're interested in and you can see how it's changed uh, according to the macroeconomic environment and you'll be able to understand a pattern and calculate what's the average all right I all think right. I think that's that's all. Uh, I hope everyone's enjoyed themselves and understood and inspired. Definitely. Uh, thank you so much, Tripta. It was it's just so incredible. And thanks everyone for joining. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel for updates regarding the upcoming IST practicals. Uh, we have a lot of interesting sessions planned in the future for all of you. And I wish you a great weekend ahead and a very happy new year. Thank you so much. Happy New Year everyone. Thanks for making the time and have a great weekend. Good luck. I hope to see you also in the